All right. Hey guys, my name is okay. Jessica and I'm a senior CS major at University of Maryland. So you're, you guys are in good hands when it's coming to AP uh, review, hopefully. Um, and if you want to introduce yourself, Diana, feel free to. I am a junior in high school and I've taken several different computer science classes. I'm the president of my school's Girls Who Code and yeah. Sweet. So um, today it's just, we're going to be learning about um, just variables and primitive types in Java. So basically, my computer doesn't freeze. Um, we're just going to be going over like what's a variable, how Java handles variables, like um, primitive versus reference types, because there's like a little bit of a nuance between the two types, different types of data types in Java. And then we're going to go over like all the primitive types, um, what you can do with them and stuff like that. So first off, what is a Java variable? So um, a job, a variable is basically something that you can like, that's used to basically store information. So like, sort of like a variable in math, basically. Um, for example, we have like age equals six. Um, basically, that's just saying in this variable called age, we're storing the number six. Um, for so when it comes to variables, there's two types of there's two different terms that you wanna um that you wanna keep in mind. The first one is initial um, declaration. So basically, um, when you declare a variable, you're just saying this variable exists. So I just pull up my notes over here. In Java, if you say like in age, um, this is sort of just declaring a variable where it's just, I have this um, variable that's an integer called age and it just exists. I don't know what like the, the value is exactly, but it just exists in like my code. Um, if I then go like age equals six, that's called initializing it. And what that basically means is I'm giving this variable a value. So declaration is for saying um, this variable exists, and this is like what it's called. Um, in initialization is giving that variable a value. Next, um, why do we use variables? So in your code, um, there are going to be times where you just want to store information and then use it later on. So um, you want to use variables because first it allows you to like change your code easily and you can like basically hold information in your code. And it's also useful because like if that value of the very like of the variable changes, um, you can sort of um, it will change like it would basically um, be easy to change information in your code without um, without having to do it by hand, basically. All right, so next, um, we're just going to go over primitive versus reference types. So um, for this lesson, we're focusing on primitive types. And primitive types are generally types that you can represent with numbers. What I mean by that is, like, for example, um, integers, which are whole numbers, Booleans, which are true or false, but you can sort of represent, you can like represent them in number form with like zeros and ones, um, and characters, which if you guys are like familiar with the ASCII chart, that's like, you can basically represent single symbols with numbers. Um, primitive types are immutable, which means that they can't be changed directly. Um, it's sort of hard to explain right now, but you'll get a better, um, You'll get a better grasp of what immutable means um, when you get to like objects and like class types. And then finally, the default value for primitives is zero. So if I don't initialize a primitive, um, it'll automatically be initialized as zero. And second, reference types are basically everything else. So for example, any classes you make in Java, arrays, and strings. And some are mutable which means they can be changed and others aren't. Um, it just depends on the class type. And then finally, um, the default for reference types is null. So if you don't specifically assign a reference like an object or anything, it will just be, um, the value of it will just be null. So, um, oh yeah, by the way, like if any of you have questions, feel free to just interrupt or um, 
just throw in a chat and I would try to, me and Diana can try to answer it to the best of our ability. So um, as I said, primitive types first represent by numbers. Um, the three major types we're gonna talk about are first number types, which are basically integers, um, doubles, which are decimals. Um, the second one is characters, which are symbols, and then Booleans, which is true and false. And then again, default value is zero. And then this is just another list of different kinds of primitives. So first is int, which is integer. These are whole numbers like negative 10 or um, 256. Second one is double, which are decimals. So like 7.56 or 1.2. And then finally, booleans, which are just true and false. So first off, integers. Um, integers are whole numbers. Again, um, these are just a bunch of different examples of whole numbers. And then um, you declare them by saying int number equals whatever value you want to give it. And the general um, operations you can do with them is like you can add, subtract, multiply, divide. And then here's just an example of like how you can declare a, a integer type. So um, the most important part is just in general for variables in Java, you have to tell Java which type the variable is. So like if I'm declaring an integer, I have to tell um, Java first that it's an integer called range. So int range equals whatever value. And then you can just print it out or something like that. So next, um, doubles. Doubles are just decimals. So 1.5, 3.33, et cetera. Um, just like with integers, you have to you have to declare it like double x equals 7.5. Um, and like with integers, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And um, this is like the it's generally the same with um with declaring variables in um, Java. So just type variable name equals whatever value. And then um, we also have characters. So characters are single letters or symbols. So this can be anything from like the percent sign to like the letter A or um, the um, number one. But most importantly for, um, for characters, you have to surround them with like the single quotes. So if you notice here, all of these are single quotes. If it's double quotes, it'll become a completely different type. So um, just like with other variables, you have to like declare the type. So char C equals single quote A. So um, it can be a little confusing just having like, I'm saying like primitive types can be, are like types that are represented by numbers. And it can be a little confusing because how can you represent like characters with numbers? And you can basically do that through something called the ASCII chart. So this is basically a list of like all the possible symbols um, that you can have, and they all are assigned a number. So um, even like things like this space bar or like, or um, starting of a text or ending of a text, these are, they all have their own number value. So um, that's how like what, that's why like characters can be primitive because they kind of have number values based off of the ASCII table. And then finally, we have Booleans. Booleans are just true false expressions. And in Java, um, the type is directly just called Boolean. So Boolean choice equals true or false. And um, if any of you guys are familiar with Python, just make sure in Java, the T for true is lowercase, not uppercase. And then um, you can do like a lot with Booleans, like um, making conditionals and stuff. And that's something that we'll be talking about in our next lesson. And then here's just an example of how you would declare it. Um, basically the same rule as with like all the other um, primitive types. And then finally, um, we're just gonna talk about something called constants. So um, a constant is basically like a variable that you never want to change. So um, for example, constants in like in other fields of STEM would be like things like pi or like um, 
trying to think like a, of another constant or like the um or different like constants in like when you in like chemical like in chemistry and stuff like that so these are just numbers that that just never change and that you can't change so we declare constants by using this keyword called final so if you put final in front of like your variable declaration python or java will just be like you can't change this um this variable in other parts of your code and then finally um i'm just gonna go over like different things or like different aspects of um primitive types So um, I'm just going to open this and then we're going to talk about it. All right. So um, basically for like for different um, primitive types, you can do a bunch of different operations. So for example, if I have int a equals 10 and then int b equals 15. Um, you can do things like multiply them. So this would print out 150. Or you can like add them, you can subtract them, like your basic math operations. Um, you can, um, so when, when it comes to like doing with like integers and doubles, like as long as you stay within the same type, um, all of these math operations are pretty like, they're pretty, um, I would say like they're, they're pretty, they're pretty like they, they do, how do you say it? They, they kind of like follow the math rules. However, like it's kind of, it gets kind of sketchy once you get to like adding characters together or like adding different types together. Um, for example, if I change this to a double, um, what, what Java will do is because all of these um, primitive types are kind of, um, they're kind of all just like the same kind, the same number type underneath, Java will actually automatically convert the integer to a double. So if I do this, this should print out a double. So as you can see, it didn't print out 150, it printed out 150.0. Um, when it comes to automatically casting to different primitive types, Java will always, um, it will always cast to like the larger type. So basically the type that can give you more information. For example, like, as an integer, you can't really represent 1.5 because integers only can only represent whole numbers. So um, what Java will do underneath is because integers can't represent as many values as a double can, it'll just cast this in A into a double 10.0 and then it'll multiply 10.0 by 15.0. So and this sort of like automatic casting doesn't work the other way around. So if I have int c equals a times b, Java will actually um, not like it. And it'll throw a compiler error because I'm trying to convert or I'm trying to automatically convert a double, which is like the larger, um, the larger type to like a smaller type. So this would actually throw a compiler error. Yeah, and it'll tell me like incompatible types. Um, it's just afraid that I'll lose information when I convert downward. And then you can even like, because like primitives are all technically numbers, you can even do things like adding characters together. So char A equals A and then I have char B equals the pen sign. I can even do something like a times b. And this should actually give me like an integer return. So it'll actually print something out like um, 3,589 because it 
it will actually convert all of these um all of these characters into numbers according to the ASCII table, and then like return an integer. Um, when it comes to primitives, so like in math and stuff, um, usually things like whole numbers and like and um, decimals are they're technically infinite, right? Um, they're technically an infinite amount of numbers, but um, in Java because variables are stored in phases of memory and variables are usually like can only be a certain size. There's actually things like the, the maximum value of integers and the minimum value. And this is all because like Java gives you only a certain amount of space in memory to actually store these these numbers. So if I like do something like in a equals integer that max in I remember correctly. This will actually print out. Hopefully. Yeah, so integer, it's actually integer that max value. This is a constant that is just the maximum value of an integer. And like the same goes for like doubles and whatnot. Um, as you can see, it's like a really large number. So hopefully like you won't go past this, but um, if you like, it, this is just like basically keep in mind that integers and doubles and like all of your variables in Java, they don't have infinite storage. And then finally, um, let me check my super secret demo note. Finally, um, when it comes to converting things like um, doubles to integer, um, what usually when you like round a decimal to like a whole number, it'll be that like you'll round anything like above five to like two or above 0.5 to one. And then like 0.4 and below would be like, would be zero, right? But when it comes to converting um, to integers, um, what Java will actually do is it'll cut everything off after a decimal place. So something like 7.9 should actually round down to seven. Because what Java is doing is it's just ignoring everything after the decimal. And it's just saying, this is just seven. So basically um, what can happen is you'll have something like um, 11 divided by like, or um, you'll have something like 11 divided by five. Or let's do something more simple, like three divided by two. And this will actually give you one instead. So um, do you have any questions about like, or do you guys have any questions about sort of everything we talked about so far with primitive? Sweet. All right. And finally, um, we're just gonna go over the, a few like practice questions. Um, do you guys want the, I guess like we're gonna go over the AP stuff. And Diana, if you want to um, take over. Yes, let's get um, So do you want to just go to them or do you want me to, yeah, you have them up, so that's good. Okay, so this question is asking what in A equals 10 and double B equals 1.0. And if we multiply them in a print statement, what will it print? So if anybody would like to answer, and then if we want, I can explain to after somebody is it a go. Somebody said B in the chat, and that is correct, because we have an integer 
multiplied by a double. So we're going to get 10.0 as our output. Um, so for this question, we are doing what we did in the previous question, but saving it at, into a variable first. So we're saying int c equals a times b, and then we're printing out c. So would this be the same as last question, or does anybody think it'd be different? A. A is correct because you can't um, just cast down without explicitly casting down. It won't automatically go to an integer if it's a double. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So now we have two characters for this one, capital A and lowercase b. And now if we want to print the addition of the two, what do you guys believe we'll print based on what we've learned? A, you think? Um, what do you think, Jessica? Um, I would say, this one's a little tricky. I would say it's C. That's what I was also thinking as well, just because normally you're adding characters. They just like sit next to each other. Um, right? Yeah, so basically when it comes to sort of adding characters together, um, what Java will do is that it'll actually convert the characters into numbers. So like, remember back in the demo, um, I tried to like multiply two characters together and it actually came out with a big number. So what it would do is it'll look at this character A and then convert it into something based off, or like a number. My number is like 63 or something, or 65, based off of the ASCII table. And it'll add these two together as numbers. So it'll come out as 163. Yes. So it's different than what we would like intuitively think, but that's how Java handles it. So um, finally, we just have just workshops and, and practice FRQ questions. So um, I'm just going to copy this first. Um, this is just a practice AP FRQ if, um, if you're interested in doing it. We also have a workshop, which is kind of like kind of like ungraded homework. So like if you also want to check that out, um, that one's just about like practicing how to like declare different types of variables and initialize them. Um, and I have the FRQ open up here. So if I remember correctly, it's basically um, two questions. Uh, number two is two parts. And the first one is just like in creating and initializing a variable. And then um, just like practicing how to create and initialize different primitives. And the second one is same thing, um, just like these different, they want you to initialize these different types of variables and like with their values. And then same, same idea with part B. And then are any of you guys like, do you, any of you want me to go over the workshop here? Um, the workshop should be st pretty straightforward. Um, just remember like the difference between declaring and initializing. And then, um, yeah, the direction should be in comments. It's basically kind of like a mad libs. And then you're just like declaring different variables, initializing them to like any value you want, and then it'll print out into a little story. And then finally, we just have like these, um, 
this feedback form. And then if you happen to do the workshop, um, we also have like a submission form. All right, and then do any of you have like any questions about like, say like the practice problems you went over or like anything we've talked about so far in the, um, in the class? All right, and then finally, we just have like um, all of these different resources in case like you want to check out more about data types. 